Welcome to God's Food for Thought. This week we're continuing with questions and answers. Today we're going to ask the question, why does God ask us to pray? Isn't he just going to do what he wants to do anyway? Of course, this questions uh, why we pray and even if we should, you know, I mean, why, what good would it do if God's not going to, if what we say has nothing to do with God, why would God ask us to do that? Well, we know that's not true because in his word, he tells us to pray. He, he wants us to be with him. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5, 17, it says, pray without ceasing. In other words, don't stop praying, <laughs> not just whether you should pray, but pray without ceasing. In James 5, 16, it says, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails much. So it does make a difference. In Matthew 7, 7, Jesus instructs, ask, ask, and it will be given to you. That implies if you don't ask, then you won't get it. Seek, and you will find. If you don't seek, you're not going to find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. In other words, God is putting the responsibility upon us. And then in the book of Revelation, it's, it's interesting on chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Now, when he had taken the scroll and the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, that's before Jesus, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So it's even talking about our prayers go up to heaven and they're collected there. We'll understand that when we get there, but th the fact that our prayers matter is quite evident in God's Word. So what really is prayer? It is asking God to help us. It's uh, involving Him in our daily lives. Prayer is associated with faith and trust in the Lord. In reality, it is asking God to do something that involves his intervention. In other words, really, I think when you're asking for a prayer, it's you're asking for almost really every time for a miracle. You know, if, if, if I can move a little pencil from one place to another, I don't have to ask God to do it. But if, if I couldn't and that pencil moved, that would be a miracle. Jesus said to ask the Father for his will to be done. In other words, when you go to God, the first thing you want to do is submit to Him. And that submission really is part of worship. When we worship God, we're bowing down to Him in humility and in love. Prayer also removes stress in our lives as we cast our care upon Jesus. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28, Come to me, all of you who are weary and, he and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the question was, why does God ask us to pray? Isn't he just going to do what he wants to do? Well, you know, the Bible says that it's not his will that any perish, but all come to repentance. But we see that not everybody comes to that place of repenting and turning to Jesus. In fact, Jesus said, there's a wide gate that leads to destruction, and many are those who are going that way. They're not doing the will of God. In fact, sin is not following the will of God. He's given us the choice. So we have the opportunity to ask and involve the Lord in our lives. We're, we're told that we have not because we ask not. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 
6 through 8 in the Amplified Bible. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. Now it says, casting all your cares. That's all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. So why does God ask us to pray? Because he wants to help us in a world where many have turned away from him. And the negative effects of that touches all of us. And God knows that the devil is still around here, tempting people to turn away from God. Prayer is an act of choosing God, believing and trusting in him personally. We can pray for ourselves. We can have other people pray for us. We're told to pray without ceasing. That means not just you're for yourself, but for others around you. Maybe somebody you know isn't walking with the Lord and they've refused to ask God into their lives. But we can say, Lord, we're asking you to go into this into their lives. And it, that opens the door for God to, to work in their lives. Prayer is one of the most important things we can do. And years ago, there was a teaching out that says, could you not tarry one hour? In other words, take an hour every day and pray. And it was a great teaching because it, you would take one twenty-fourth of your day and spend it with the Lord in prayer, asking him, listening to him and all of that. And, and it's been part of Christianity for ever since the beginning, praying, 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 involving the Lord in everything you do. And we're going to end today's lesson with that old hymn, sweet hour of prayer. And I pray that it just stirs your heart to know that God is there waiting for you to ask him. We'll see you tomorrow. We got a lot more questions coming up. Bye bye.
taught, escaped the